Morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace to you. See who joins in this morning. Ah, good morning. You will join. We're starting the book of Romans this morning. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. If you missed midweek service yesterday, you really missed. I think you should go back to the YouTube channel and listen to the message yesterday. Share the brief exaltation yesterday about spiritual warfare. It will bless you. Yesterday was amazing. I think you should go back to midweek and watch the service. I think you should go back and watch the service if you did not watch the service yesterday go back and watch the service i will share that also on the mainland this so i gave you mainland's meal that's for mainland church this um this thursday evening by god's grace you people that are chasing yeah and share the message too and share the message too please also share the message too yes this i i shared something in church yesterday that i think will will bless you so i think you should share the message too um it will really bless you share the message talk to somebody about jesus and yeah, I will share that on the mainland to mainland church. I'm there this evening. Should be there. Um, six o'clock, I'll be on the mainland this evening. Um, 85 Ikorodu Road, Vantage Studio, Fadi Bus Stop. I'll be on the mainland church this evening um, to share that with the mainland church. You, you will love it. It will bless you. Not the best view where I'm at, but... Okay, we can work with this. So we're studying the book of Romans chapter 1 today. We're going to make our declaration, study the book of Romans chapter 1 today, and uh, Romans chapter 2 tomorrow. Don't miss Sunday morning. Sunday morning is going to be interesting and very enlightening. It will bless you. It will, it will shock you too, to some of you, but it will, it will help you. Good morning, Moji. It will help you too help you guys let's do this let's do this let's make our declaration i can't pin it down today i hope you know the declaration yourself i can't pin it down today do you know your declaration i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus all my sins are forgiven yeah i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus all my sins I am forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I am irrevocably blessed, eternally forgiven. Somebody said no. Uh, find it now and get the our morning declaration. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Let's make our morning declaration this morning. Uh... If you guys can post it, you can post it. I have to look for it down, down, down on my phone. It's very far. It's very, 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 very far, far, far away. Far, far, far away. Are you guys ready? We can go to Romans chapter 1 and start reading Romans chapter 1. I'll read out of New King James Version. If you have your Bible, um, we'll read together Romans chapter 1. Let's make our declaration. You know it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by Him. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed, eternally forgiven. I enjoy. I have divine health. I am the healed of the Lord. What are your declarations? Make this declaration. Every day we post it here. By now you should have it. Post it if you can. Let's make our declarations this morning. Let me see if I can find it for you this morning. 
and then we can do it. I think you guys already spoiled with me posting it here all the time. So it's going to take me a minute or two to find it, and I'll post it here. We'll make a declaration and go from there. So just keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hold up a minute. It's, sorry. I'm two minutes away from it. There's, okay, got it. Okay, that's it. So can we make our declaration now? You have it, and then we can go straight to God's word. Amen. You have it, and then we can go straight to God's word. One, two, three, go. Can we say this? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by Him. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. Grace is working for me. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Can we do that one more time and then we can go to Romans chapter 1. I hope you're doing it in your homes. I hope you're doing it that doing it too. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All my sins are forgiven. I'm passionately loved by God. I'm powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I'm irrevocably blessed, eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. Grace is working for me. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Amen. We're reading out of Romans chapter 1. I begin reading this morning. Romans chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, Romans chapter 1, um, 1 to 32. We're studying the book of Romans today. And um, it will bless you. Every day we'll try and do a chapter of the book of Romans. It will bless you. Amen. Amen. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. Um, so the word there will be, Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, sanctified for the work of the gospel. Sanctification is separation. Separation. Um, Dickin is not in. I think there's only we missed you on Sunday. We missed you on Sunday. We missed you on Sunday. I was going to call. I forgot. Yeah. Um, good, good to see you here. Which he promised before through the prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Verse 3, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Through him, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name for his name rather among whom you are the called of jesus christ to all who are in rome beloved of god called to be saints grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord 
Jesus Christ. Verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the world, the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you in my prayers. 10. Making request, if by some means, now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. Let me say this. Verse 11. I want you to look at verse 7. Verse 11. Paul is saying, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. So this is Paul describing online service and in-person service. They are not the same. Online is good if you're not in town, you live in, in diaspora. Even with London Church, London Church, I, I, I would have to visit them every now and again and pray with them and impact because some impactations cannot come online. Jesus didn't die online, he died on the cross. So when people say, I just watch online, I don't go to church. It's not the best thing to do. Online is a substitute that cannot replace the norm. Online is a good substitute, but should not in any way replace the norm, the gathering of God's sins. Yeah? Because there's some online... Uh, you, you can't get the impartation. Those of you who come to church, it's, it is not the same. Trust me, it is not the same online as powerful as that is. And we thank God for the technology of YouTube and everything. But Paul is saying in verse 11, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift that you may be established. That means there are some gifts that cannot be imparted through letters. Because Paul's online message was writing of letters. You know, then there was no technology of um, IG Live being in your city room. Um, and everything. It was um, it was writing letters. So Paul's online ministry was letters. So if Paul was in this day and time, Paul would be doing online to the churches. But Paul is saying, I want to come to you to impact you some spiritual gift. Jesus didn't die online. He died on the cross. No, Jesus didn't die. It was a virtual dying. It was not a virtual dying. No. It was real. So, my advice to you, I know some of you can be busy, and really busy you are. But don't sit at home on Sunday mornings if you can drive. I mean, there are two services now. I know a brother who said to me, I walk on the radio station every Sunday morning, 6 to 9. But as soon as that is done, 10 o'clock service, I'm here. Don't, don't, don't lose the opportunity of fellowship because of online. Don't do that. Paul is saying, some things I long I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. So there are some gifts that cannot be impacted online. Jesus didn't die online. Jesus died on the cross. It was not a virtual death. It was an actual death. Yeah. So online is good if you're not in town. But if you're in town, make it a point of duty because of some impartations will not come online. You can't disciple effectively online. You cannot be discipled effectively online. Online should come when you don't have a choice and then you can appreciate members who are in diaspora, who live in London. Yeah, you can appreciate online, but it is not, it is not, um, don't, don't do that. Don't sit at home and say, I'm just watching and you leave your faith to network. It was not a virtual death. It was an actual death. Yeah, or they saw him die. Yeah, they saw him die. Maybe if it was this day and time, they would have streamed his death life. But he died. Yeah. So let's take it serious. Verse 12, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. So Paul is saying... There's a level of encouragement you can never get online that you must get in person when you come into the room. 
And it's just the truth. There's a level of, you can't get it. Don't make it a habit. It's not the same. It's really not the same. Nenka, you're right. It is not the same. Don't make it a habit. I'm talking to you. Don't sit at home on Sunday morning and say, well, I'm watching online. It is not the same. Paul says there are certain spiritual gifts. I want to come to you that I want to impact to you some spiritual gift. It can happen online. Amen. Verse 13, do not forsake the assembly of, of the saints as the manner of some is. Glory to God. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often plan to come to you, but I was hindered until now that I might have some fruit among you also as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to the barbarians both the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. So Paul is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to preach this, um, this gospel of God's grace to those of you who are in Rome. I want to preach this gospel. I'm ready, I'm dedicated to preach the gospel of God's grace to you guys verse 16 romans chapter 1 verse 16 for i am not ashamed i use the scripture all the time of the gospel of christ i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god to salvation to everyone who believes for the jews first and also to the greek so the gospel does not have power. The gospel is the power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. So if you want to say the power of God, the power of God is locked up in the gospel of Christ unto soteria, unto salvation. Glory to God. Glory to, that's Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Let me just check something. Romans 1, verse 16. Amen. Amen. Who's who's following us? You, you, you good? Are you following? Are you getting blessed already? Are you getting blessed already? Amen. 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 Glory to God. I just wanted to check. Some, I wanted to share something with you, but you know, another day. We just we continue. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For in it. In it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So the gospel does not reveal the flaws of man. The gospel reveals the righteousness of God. The gospel does not reveal the flaws of man. The gospel reveals the righteousness of God. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the justified shall live by faith. You know, I say this all the time. God, God's wrath is always on sin, not on man. So there are people who make themselves um, a candidate of the wrath of God because you refuse this salvation. Um, and it's revealed to all ungodliness. So, but the righteousness of God is seen from faith to faith. Um, in, in the righteousness, in the Bible says, in it is the righteousness of God revealed, rather. So, the gospel reveals the righteous nature of God. Glory to God. Verse 18. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in righteousness. So, what makes you a candidate of the wrath of God? Is that you refuse righteousness, and this and this rot is on the day of judgment, not now. God is not angry now, but when Christ comes and takes the church away, you see the rot of God would be you 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 receive the consequences of the rejection of Jesus. That's, that's talking about damnation. Yeah, from verse eighteen to the end speaks about just people who are living in unrighteousness who 
are given to profanity. He's not talking to us. I just want to give you a backdrop. From 18 to the end, he's not talking to you. From verse 8 to 16, was talking to you. I desire to come to Rome, was talking to believers. So let's break it down. Chapter, from verse 1 to 7 is the introduction. Verse 8 to 16, 17 was talking to us believers. 18 to the end was not talking to us. It's like you don't mix um, everything together. So I, I'll do that again. From verse 1 to 7 is introduction. From verse 8 to 17, it was talking to us as believers. From verse 18 to the end, is not talking to you. It's talking to people who have rejected the gospel. Even if God loves them, they've not put themselves in a place to receive God's love. Amen. Let's read from verse 18. For the, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth of truth in righteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them. That means they've refused the gospel. For since the creation of the world, his invincible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even with eternal power, Godhead, so that they are, they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. How do you glorify God as God? By receiving what Christ has done for you. I hope you're, you're appreciating this explanation. And we are thankful, but became futile in the thoughts, and their foolish hearts darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Professing to be wise, they became fools. That means they, they, have you ever met such people? Well, I, well, I dealt with them in school. I did philosophy as my first degree. Um, they, they prof that professing to be wise, they became fool. 23, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creepy things. They, they made idols. Piflo, is there a difference between those who reject Christ and the people that committed apostasy? I'll explain that at the end. Very, very interesting question. Very interesting question. Let me answer it. People who committed apostasy were never there. The Bible says they went out of us because they were never of us. If they were at all, if they were of us, they would not have left. So the apostasy is a revelation that you were not really there. It's just an English word uh, to say you were there and you rejected it. It's that you were not really there. Your heart was not there. Once your heart sinks and aligns with the Spirit of God, you are locked up in Christ eternally. You can't reject it. You can't reject Him. Apostasy is a revelation that you were not there. They went out of us. I'm answering you with scripture because they were never of us. If they were of us, they would not have left. They would have stayed. Okay. Verse 24. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lust of their heart to dishonor their body. Somebody say, it's, it was God. It's not, that's not what it means that God gave them up. God was like, since you guys have chosen this, this is the consequences of this. That's what the Bible says. Um, um, yeah, verse 25 who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served creatures rather than the creator who is blessed forever so these guys are into idolatry so it's not talking to us amen, like I said, if you're just joining verse 1 to 7 is introduction verse 8 to 17 talks to us the message of the gospel is there. From verse 18 to the end, is describing people who have rejected Christ. They heard the message. It did not concern them. They went into idolatry, went into all kinds of craziness. You find homosexuality here too. Verse 26, for the reason God gave them up to vile passion for their own women, exchange the natural use. People say, but the Bible doesn't state clearly. I'm like, have you read your Bible? Such a complete book. For this reason, God gave them up to, to vile passion. When it means God gave them up is that they don't do the idolatry. Tire, the, it's talking about the absence of God. That's what it means. So the absence of God for their women 
exchange the natural use for what is against nature. I'll read. You can read it in another translation. What is against nature? 27. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. Watch this. Bond in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. I think TPT says, um, for even though they were once a part of us, they withdrew from us because they were never really out of, were never really of our number. For if they had truly belonged to us, they would have continued with you. That is, um, I'm answering um, um, your question. The question that was asked, apostasy or rejection of Jesus. Yeah. So homosexuality. Likewise, also men. Let me see if I can read 26 and 27 in, um, in another translation. Let me find. Let me check TPT 26 and 27. Mm. So homosexuality and and um, lesbianism and all those craziness is is was caused by the absence of God. Yeah, for this reason, God gave them over to their own disgraceful and vile passion, inflamed with lust for one another. Men and women ignored their natural order and exchanged normal sexual relationships for homosexuality women engaged in lesbian conduct and men committed shameful act with men receiving in themselves the due penalty for their deviation the bible says it clearly this is homosexuality it was caused by the absence of god they gave themselves to idol that's where it came from it's not see i was born like that no don't let the devil deceive you Don't let the devil deceive you. Deceive you. Let me see what what the message says about uh, verse twenty six and twenty seven. Who who followed, refusing to know God? Sorry, was followed, refusing to know God. They soon didn't know how to be human either. Oh my God, women didn't know how to be women. Men didn't know how to be men sexually confused they abused and defiled one another women with women men with men all lost no love and they paid for it how they paid for it emptied of god and love godless and loveless wretches so is there in scripture is there in scripture this is TPT. I'm reading message to verse 26 and 27. So homosexuality, homosexuality and lesbianism came out of the absence of God. People who refused God. That's where that thing came from. Amen. This we're reading Bible. Don't fight me. I saw it. We me and you saw it here. Don't look at ah. It's like he's changing. I'm not changing it to he's con he's, he's condemning us. He's saying, um, how do they say it again? I feel attacked. I feel condemned. No. We're not condemning you. Christ has set you free. We're just examining where this nonsense came from. And it can only be fixed by the love of God. Has the number dropped since I, since I started talking about it? Okay. Because that's, how, that's what happens. We are all here. <laughs> Verse 26. This is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. I'm reading NLT, New Living Translation. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex instead indulging in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, born with their lust for each other men did shameful things with other men and as a result of this thing they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved because those things have health complications so 
scripture. I think message gives us the actual message. Let me read message again. Was followed, refusing to know God, they soon didn't know how to be human either. And the Bible talks about natural use. So you can't tell me that is just my nature. No, it's an abuse of nature because there is a natural use. Please, what Bible translation are you reading? Usually my Bible translation are message translation, the passion translation, new living translation, AMPC. So I, I'm, reading, I'm reading message again. I'm reading message now. Was followed, refusing to know God. They soon didn't know how to be human either. So when King James says natural, like that thing behind here, man, that thing is an exit, not an entrance. Yes, emptied, emptied to God and love, godless and loveless. Emptied of God and love. Godless and loveless wretches. See, that thing there, man, that thing behind you by your boom boom, is an exit, not an entrance. So, the natural use is to release something out, not to receive anything in. When you want to use it to receive something, it is abuse of the natural use. And the church said, Amen. Let me see whether the numbers are dropping. Yes. Hmm. So natural. So don't tell me it's just the way I am naturally. That's not how you are naturally. The anus is to release, not to receive. It's not your natural use. And even if you have that struggle, begin to speak to your body. This is how God created you. I command you to align to your natural purpose in Christ Jesus. What is wrong with your body? What is he, UP flu? That thing behind, it's, it's an exit. Don't, don't, Receive from there. Hmm. One more time message and then we can move. Was followed, refusing to know God. They soon didn't know how to be human either. So when you are doing that, you are not being human. Women didn't know how to be women. Men did know how to be men. Sexually confused, they abused and defiled one another. Women with women, men with men, all lost no love. And they paid for it. Oh, how they paid for it. Emptied of God and, and love, godless and loveless riches. I don't even need to cut this place to put on Insta blog. It's not what I want to put on Insta blog. It's just... We don't want to remind them of their complication. We want to remind them of the love of God. Amen. So, that's a bit. Before, why are you taking deep breaths? Because I'm thinking of, hey, cover my bum bum with the blood of Jesus. Let's go back to King James. King James, let's continue. From dead, from verse 28. Huh. And so when the Bible talks about natural use, it's all about love. I don't want to... It's not, it's not, it's not this part I want to put on Instagram, no. I want to put on Insta blog. I want to put the part about God loves them. Um, they already know that something is wrong with them. They're not... They know. They, they may cover it. They may hide it. But there's already a struggle there. We don't want to emphasize your struggle. We just want to show them the love of God. Before mm. you're such a comedian. Verse 28. Hmm? The word is bad, though. Hmm? 
Hmm. Hmm? Devil is bad. Cover, cover my bone with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No weapon fashion against me shall prosper. Who rubbish is that? Let's go, let's go. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. You see what I'm saying? That thing comes... Yeah, he, 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 he has to be a debased mind to do those things that are not fair. Uh, uh, not fitting. It's not fitting. It's not fitting. Hey, hey. Kayanan de Cassis is not fitting. Okay. Not fitting. Being, uh, let me read this not fitting part in the message translation because there, there are issues here. Since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering them and let them run loose. And then all hell broke loose, rampart evil, grabbing and grabbing, grabbing and grasping, vicious backstabbing. No, no, no. Let's go back to King James because you see. See that thing? You see? See what I'm saying? Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. They're not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whispers. Whispers. Backbiters. Haters of God. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil. Wow. Inventors of evil. TPT put it constantly. Let me check TPT. Oh God. Because he's you can't tell me no. Into 28. And because they thought it was worthless to embrace the true knowledge of God, God gave them over to a worthless mindset to break all rules of proper conduct. All rules of proper conduct. So it is proper conduct to release from that's proper use. Amen. To release. There's no way you can sell that into me. And tell me that's how God created you. The devil is lying to you. No, no, no. The devil is lying to you. 29. Okay, we're done with 29. No. Okay, with verse 30. Backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. <sighs> Undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only to not only do the same but also approve of those who practice it watch this let me read verse 32 again and knowing the righteous judgment of god that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do the same but also approve of those who practice it so let me tell you, church people, folks, listen to me. Listen to me in Jesus' name. 
if you find people struggling with that, show them the love of God. But don't let them convince you and don't let them lie to themselves that that's how God made them. No. That is not how God made them. There's an abuse. There's something wrong. That is not how God made them. Don't encourage them. He says, not just those who do it, but those who encourage you, don't worry. It's okay. It's just the way you are. No, 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 no. Invite them to church. Let them hear the word of God's grace. But don't condemn them. Whilst you don't condemn them, please don't indulge them. What does approval look like? Let's check other translations. One of the fastest way for Bible, Bible interpretation. Let's check. They know perfectly well they are spitting in God's face. They don't care what's. They hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. That's what message says. That means we even now, we, we applaud them. That's what it looks like. I'm speaking to, I think it's in a works, approval. We applaud them. We make them our brand ambassadors. We indul- whilst you don't condemn them, please don't indulge them. Instruct them in love. Show them the love of God in Christ. Show them the love of God in Christ. Whilst you don't, don't indulge them. That's what the Bible is saying. So, isn't it? Message is, they know perfectly well, well they are spitting in God's face and they don't care worse. They hand out prices to those who do the worst Things best. That's one way. Let me go to the next. Let me find what TPT says. TPT 32. Although they are fully aware of God's laws and proper order, and knowing that those who do all of these things desire to die, yet they still go headlong into darkness, encouraging others to do the same, applauding them when they do. It's not a gray area. It's not a gray area. It's not a gray area. I will love you, but I will not enjoy what you're doing. No. Loving you means I'm not going to condemn you, but I will keep telling you the truth to your face. Sure, you know you need help. Sure, you know Christ. So it's not that, oh, no, 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 no problem. No, see, let me even tell you. God understands. See, times have changed. Leave that Bible thing. Leave that Bible thing. I can't condemn you. You know, it's not really Adam and Eve again. Things have changed. God understand. No, 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 no. You have crossed the line. So it's to hate sin but love the sinner. You have moved it. You are shifting boundaries. No, no, no. Don't worry, I have them as members. And I know you, you live in these days and time and you may even know some. I have them and I love them to bits. But that issue, we keep talking about it. We keep hammering it. This thing, you need to fix it. Love, love of God will fix it for you. This is not who you are. Don't give me that crap. Don't let the devil lie to you. You keep engaging them. Love speaks the truth in love. But not, uh, no, let's not talk about it. No, no, no. It's you keep talking to them about it. So you must love them but hate what they are doing. Because God loves them too. That's how you preach to them. And because we live in we live in these perilous times, men are lovers of themselves. You know, lovers of themselves, you know. So you have to have to preach. You have to preach to them. Can law and mixture of people hear grace and teaching right living here? This grace. This is grace. This is truth. Yeah. Love speaks the truth in love. You must be, no, 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 no. See, you are, you are, no, this is not who you are. No, 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 no. Don't, don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let, don't let the devil lie. While loving them and telling them is wrong, does it mean you can't walk with them and be friends with them? You can walk with them. You can be friends with them. But how do I put it? You can walk with them and be friends with them, but they are not your, um, they are not your, um, how do I put it now? Somebody, I'm looking for the world, I'm looking for the world to help you. You can work with them and you'll be friends with them. You'll be seen with them. But 
you must be seen with them to transform them and not to conform with them. That's what I'm looking for, yeah. So they can be seen with you and you are transforming, you are not conforming because with, with, after a while, you two start conforming them. So you will be friends with them to the extent, Moji, you got that right, to the extent that they know your stance on the issues. You guys may be comrade, but not your confidant and your constituent. Not you, 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 they'll be constituents, not comrade and even co and confidant. At best, comrades, but they cannot be your confidant and your in Christ people. So you be friends with them, talk with them to the intent that they know, because one day they will try it with you, and evil communication. The Bible says corrupt good manners. And then they say, show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. It can be your Christ, man. Yeah. So you talk to them. You, they, they can be your constituents. At best, your comrade, but they will not be your... Mm -mm -mm. You got to be careful with that. Nobody's saying to dump them as your friend, not to talk of even your family member. But even if your family member, they sh you should be the transform. That one, you should be a that one. You don't have a choice to that. You have a choice with friends. You don't have a choice with family members. You don't have a choice with family members. No, you, you don't have control over that. But they will know where you stand on the issue. They will not be confused on your stance on those issues. And, they would, and before you know, they would, they, what if the same, same thing we are saying is it's not a big deal. They, you know, they must, what are you going to do? Whether or not you are with your siblings or not, they are your siblings is not going to change. It's not going to change. So you trying to avoid them because that doesn't even make sense. Because this, this, you have the same surname, cousins, family, family, you people will gather there. So you better start doing the work of transformation. That's a cross you have to carry. We all, we all have one of, one of that in our family. Families here and the other and the other. So that's something you got to deal with. They should know your stance on the issue. To the intent that the day they are, they are tired of what they, what they are doing, it is you they are coming to because they know that you did not condemn them, but you also told them the truth. Because Christians come across as the most judgmental. So we need to learn how to approach this without compromising the truth yes so you can come with the spirit of love and you say no 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 god loves you so much that's not what god wants you to be so you are saying the truth in love the truth is so is so interwoven in love that the person cannot say she he or she was judged yeah yeah so it's the skill is love you must your love must be louder than your truth I don't know if you heard what I said. Your love must be louder than your truth because your love is a person. Your truth is also a person. Your love must be louder, very loud. That this person loves me. That means you are there. You see them. You don't. They feel. They must feel the love, but they must hear the truth. Your truth must be interwoven with love. They must feel the love. They must hear the truth. They must hear the truth. Some of us, our truth is so louder than our love. <laughs> it chokes them. The Bible says Jesus came with grace and truth. So every truth that is doesn't come graciously, your love must be louder than the truth that you want to preach. Nobody wants to know the God of love when they don't feel the love of God that you say you have. Engage, don't indulge them. Engage, don't indulge, and don't escape. Don't escape, don't indulge, engage. Your love must be louder than your truth. Nobody wants to know the God of love that you say you have when they've not felt the love of God. Calling it brutal honesty. Truth doesn't need to be brutal. Truth doesn't need to be brutal. Truth must be delivered in love. Now, isn't it? There are some of them that you have got. You people have gotten to the place where you are like, no, no, no. See, let me just tell you the honest truth. You are misbehaving. 
but the person must have felt there are people that i can tell that in church and outside of church but they felt my love so much that even if the day i give them blunt truth and brutal truth they go back knowing that ah man i messed up gone i'm not in doubt people loves loves me so they're not confused that I love them in spite of my bitter truths. Am I uh, like Dr. Becky? I'll tell Dr. Becky the truth. Anyhow, I like it. For instance, Dr. Becky. Anyhow, I like it. I'll tell her the truth. Bam. She's not in doubt that I love her. She's not confused. She can tell you from I didn't like this that ah, this is my father. He loves me. Die. Yes. So, but not everybody. You are not there with everybody. So, but your love must be the foundation of everything. So your love must be the foundation of everything. Yeah. Glory to God. I'm sure I'm, I've helped you guys today. I've loved that without holding back. Dr. Becky, you know, that's my daughter. You know, I, you know, without holding back, I will. I, that's so I can tell. I, Becky, you know, you know, you are mad now. This one is crazy that is doing you. And it's not because, but she knows it's coming from love. But I'm just saying, you can't start shouting truth on people that you don't have a, re a love relationship with. They've not encountered the love of God. So when we, when they see us, we want to first give them the love of God. From there, we can now. Bring truth and transform these lives. Amen. I can always count on your honesty. To be honest, I can always count on your honesty, Pastor Flourish. Thank you so much. That's my, that's my OG from way back. You know, yes, sir. And that's, and, and, and that's, that's, and that's, if there's anything about me, I'll tell you the truth. I don't care. You, I'll tell you the truth. But I have loved you so much. But I know people who now hold on to the one time that you scold them over the 200 times that you love them, you know, that one is your problem. That's not my problem. So you can deal with that. And so people that, oh, Pastor Fresh was angry. So they don't, they don't go up. So it's start throwing tantrums. He, look at what he did to the department. Look at what he did said to this. Uh, they will not forget all the times that you have loved them ridiculously. No, that's your problem. That's not my problem. I can't put that on. I mean, you can't start shouting truth on people. You have not experienced the love of God through, who have not experienced the love of God through you. So good. I think I think today was really powerful. What do you guys think? I think today was really powerful. We dealt with a very interesting topic in our day and time from the Word of God, and you know, I think it was missed with a lot of grace. Once I covered my bum bum with the blood of Jesus, Amen. My heart and my mind, in Jesus' name. I love you all. One time, over two hundred times. <laughs> Yeah, I love you all. It's only chastised those who love. I love you all. You guys, see you tomorrow. On mainland, I'm coming to you. Um, we're going to share what I shared yesterday in church on the mainland. It's going to be powerful. I love mainland church. They have energy, energy, energy. I love mainland church. And then um, on tomorrow morning, I'm going to be at 9 o'clock for Romans chapter 2. Um, see, if you're, a, you're in the workforce, don't miss the workers' training starting this weekend. There are rules and regulations for the class. There will be, be award to the best graduating student. Even if you're already in the, you're a chairman in your department, everybody's going through the workforce now. I'm raising the prototype church. So you all didn't learn well, and I need to teach you all the truth. Everybody goes through the workforce. It starts this Saturday, 9 a.m., Sunday, 6.45 a.m. It starts this Saturday. I'm teaching this first class. Uh, I'm teaching a lot this first class. And um, we'll take it off with them. Keep me your prayers. And then there's two services on Sunday. Oh, wow. So I'm preaching this evening. I'm preaching in the morning with you guys, 9 o'clock. I'm preaching tomorrow evening somewhere. On Saturday, I'm teaching 9 o'clock. On Sunday, I have two services. And the name of the Lord will be glorified. I love you all. Have a flourishing weekend. I want to see you on the mainland. Um, please show up, mainland people show up as soon as you see the flyers on the mainland please repost, retweet, re, re whatever and all those things, I love you all God bless you people was people was outside that window not, you know, it's just me just thinking about my itinerary for the week and just asking God for grace let me not say pity myself I, let me just put it, asking God for grace and then uh, thinking about the church lease and the landlord disturbing me and just those many, many things on my head. All right. 
You guys, I love you all. Blessings.